What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, Dando Commentary. We got Crimson1634 versus Doctor1000 rating. So, um, based on what I see, I would assume that he probably made Dark Law and it got evac'd. Because I see Shadow Miss in the graveyard and an evac there, and I don't see a Dark Law. So, that's what I assume happened. Now, this storm is. Definitely not what Doctor wanted to see because some of his back row is going to get newt. And now he gets to get rid of all three cards because it happened to be an MST that was chained. So Vanities is gone, Mass Change is gone, MST is gone. He kind of had to counter to what Crimson wanted to do. Unfortunately, he just, just loses everything because Storm just says no. Alright, so he obviously is going to be able to get his scout going. I just wanted to check the price on Storm to see if it went up or down or anything like that. And we know he has at least um, at least one scout in the grave and in the extra deck that he can pendulum back. Now heroes aren't really the greatest top decking deck, so unless I mean Mass Charge is really good top deck. He's looking for his, I mean, probably in this situation, Crimson is just going to want to complete his pendulum scale. Nope. Sacrifice. Oh, I guess if he has a monster that's a disc in his hand, he could just OTK him. Yeah. I didn't know what his hand was. Because now you can just, um, you can just pendulum back your guys. Now he's at 8,000 life points. Will he be able to kill him? I don't know. But then again, Carrier gives all your dudes 300 attack. Did they really need that? Like, I never thought such an obscure effect would like make so big of a difference. It makes a difference when you add them all up. When your opponent summons four monsters, and it's like, wait a minute, you just got an extra 1,200 attack, which is basically like a mini monster. So you know what I mean? Like that causes so many games. All right, so everything gets nuked, or excuse me, um, he basically does a ton of damage. I mean, Mass Charge for like a Bubble Man Acid would be great here. Okay, he has Mass Charge. There is life. The Dream is not completely dead yet. Now, the problem is, um, well, no, he could, what's the call? He could kill this. He could, yeah, he could totally kill this because this guy's only sitting on 21. So he's going to Mass Charge. Oh wait, it depends. If he has another level four monster in his hand, he could totally um he could totally bubble him. He still needs to get rid of this shit though. Cause I mean I guess you have to ignore the scout. You're not gonna be able to get over that for a little bit. But gotta kill this motherfucker, because you don't want your dark law just dying. So I think he searched bubble man. I looked away for a second. He gets Dark Law out. Again, Dark Law can kill this shit, so you ain't got to worry about that. It's this motherfucker having 2,700. That's a problem. <clears throat> if only heroes had a, like an XC that let them attack twice that wasn't Blade Arm and Ninja that didn't have a fucking weak-ass 2,100 attack. like, Or an XC that was like, I don't know, 3,000. Okay, so I guess he's just going to attack now. Goodbye disc. Main phase two. Now if he has like a mass chain. Oh no. Okay. That that sucks. I don't know what his hand was. But it must have been. Not good. Because. I mean he can't get gamed. But yeah. That's, that's really not good. What would have been great. Would have been an absolute zero. That would have been awesome. Because he could have just ram Ab Zero into this and just nuked everything, and all that shit would have got banished. But I mean, I, I don't know. He would have needed uh, Miracle Fusion for that. He could have banished the Bubble Man and the um, the Shadow Mist in his graveyard, and that would have given him a hero plus a water. So, Crimson. I mean, real, really all he has to do is just attack and then activate Scout and just get Sacrifice and he should pretty much win from there.
So for some random reason, he's going to activate Scout's effect. I guess unless I guess he just wants to go for a game. Because if he would have attacked, he could have gotten over Dark Law easily, but he wouldn't um, have been able to game him. He just would have taken 300 and... What's it called? Oh, okay, he's getting stealth, but... Again, there's a possibility he could just lose the stealth, and then what did you accomplish? I mean, me, I'm a conservative player, so... Like, I just would have attacked... I mean, I guess there's 50-50, you could have outed Dark Law right there, but even when you attributed, your tribute would have went to Banish, so it's like, is it really worth it? I I don't know, like, I mean, that play was just fucking stupid, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this shit. It was stupid to, to activate Scout, knowing that you had 50% chance of losing whatever you searched. I mean, and the result is, if he would have hit the, the stealth, the result is the same. Actually, no, the result is way worse because you could have just attacked and then used it. You don't game him, but you put yourself in a position where you have so much advantage, you probably are going to win unless he top decks God. And now you're in a position where you paid 800 life points for nothing. So, I mean, I don't know. Now, Doctor's looking at his extra deck. We know he has Bubble Man and I don't know what else. I mean, he must not have had an MST at that time. Otherwise, he would have just probably MST'd the carrier. Uh, actually, no, because then Dark Law would have still died. You'd have MST'd the scout, obviously. That shit would have got banished, too. So, he's looking at his extra deck. I mean, if you can get the rank 4, Exiton Knight seems like the obvious choice. And he just scoops it up, surprisingly. I mean, I don't know if he had like three monsters or what, but just didn't have the tools that he needed. Despite the fact that Crimson desperately wanted to keep him in the game. Because I think he could have just crashed over Dark Law and then he could have gotten a sacrifice. And like the, the sacrifice would have ensured that even if your opponent made Exiton Knight, you still get something out of your board instead of just losing. Like, I don't know what the face down was. Maybe it could have been... Um, a vanities or a skill drain it, it could have been a blowout card but it also could have been an MST it could have been something completely dead so if you get sacrifice you guarantee yourself that if you get Exiton knighted or you get um, acided then you don't like auto lose you, you have a backup plan so if I'm doctor I'm definitely going first <clears throat> I think that this that him deciding on first or second should take less than two seconds uh, simply because if you make Dark Law turn one, then you basically counter the scout. So, um, the six, he chooses second. Wow. That's surprising. I was going to say the six card advantage that, um, Cleese open up with is basically mitigated by Dark Law. Not to mention whatever they get gets fucking banished. So yeah, <clears throat> you could have basically just played it right now and You'd have had a one in five chance of totally banishing the um whatever the fuck uh the the scout basically. Yeah, I, I don't like heroes going second. I just don't. So he opened sacrifice, set one, scout. I say that just because you have an inherent way to counter your opponent. He goes a hero lives. See if he has a vanities or something. He must not. He's going to activate Dark Law's effect. Brings it out in attack mode, surprisingly. Gets himself a mass change. Fair enough. And not sure what he's going to do. Okay, he's got Monk. I still feel like Heroes... They're a good deck. They're not as good as Klee's Burning Abyss or Sir Talonites. I think they're as good as Shadows. Um, I do think that they need a little more pieces. Um, I think they need. I think Stratos would help them out definitely. Um, they should bring back Stratos to the TCG. It, it would it would be, give them much more consistency. And especially they they wouldn't have to fucking always search for um for fucking Bubble Man. You know what I mean? Like. 
and and Neo's alias. Like Neo's alias would just just immediately get taken out of the deck. Could you imagine if you shadow miss like into a dark law, and then you get to search Stratos? Like that that's fucking amazing, because it's like you go plus when you summon shadow miss and then you get dark lawn and you get to search stratos and stratos pluses like that's awesome so it looks like he's going nuke after the back row which is a good play by the way i say that because um he gets to kill the monster and it depends on if he has another a way of getting a dark law all right so he played climate change that's actually to me that's the second that's like the second scariest card in the deck like it's certain cards i just don't want to see because they're fucking insanely difficult to play around um climate change is one of those cards climate change is like i don't really care about the rest of the deck because it is what it is okay so it appears he's going like full yellow here i mean he might have to do some math and to see if uh he can basically game him if he has like a regeki set then probably can game him or if he has um what's that card da, 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 da. Uh, miracle fusion or mass charge probably can game him because he has scout so you do have to kind of um adjust to that so he's going for a rank four I mean, if I can't game him, I'm going cast though. I'm, I'm just gonna spin your your carry. I'm not giving you. I'm not giving you anything in your extra deck. The only thing you have in your extra deck is a fucking shitty ass scout, and I'm gonna leave that. Okay, he has he has a miracle set. That should be game. Yeah, he goes for Ab Zero and um, Hero OTK. Legit. Uh, Ab Zero was he could have summoned Ab Zero or um, as a Dario. That the, what's it called the um. The uh the dark one using he could have he could have done that using um damn it uh summoner monk but actually um Ab Zero is way better because uh with acid on board Ab Zero gets the 500 attack boost so Ab Zero was actually sitting at 3k so yeah Doctor goes second and it totally worked out for him a lot of that had to do with the fact that Crimson had no I mean he just had no floodgates and when when Cleves don't open with floodgates, man, that deck is so fucking average. Oh my god! Because when you go second, to me, you always account for you. Are, you always have to think, all right, I'm gonna have to use one MST on the scout, and you know maybe have to use another MST on the the um the vanity skill drain. But if they don't have that vanity skill drain, man, you get to play Yu-Gi-Oh and just I don't know. The deck becomes so goddamn average at that point. Because every deck can make a can make a play that kind of outs whatever they do. Like you just you get rid of that sacrifice with a castell or something good and you just wreck that deck. Uh the the power of Cleese is is the fact that the, the floodgates are real and if you kill their monsters, they can just summon them all back for free. And it looks like Crimson is half bricked because um whenever you summon Carrier and you well, if you summon Carrier that means you don't have scout because ninety percent of the time people you people gonna activate scout first. But if he doesn't have sacrifice, if he has like four monsters, oh my god! If you're doctor, this could not have went better. This is the type of game where you get fucking just. This is prison rape style. If Cleese open this bad, it doesn't matter if you have max C or what or max C or Valor, you'll still lose to just about everything. Because even Teller is like, they'll smash you. Even if they can't special their first turn, they'll smash you. Maybe against Burning Abyss if you had Max C, but if I'm if I'm a Burning Abyss player, I'm I'm probably gonna try and OTK you. Like I'm I'm gonna go YOLO. And if you have Swift Scarecrow, good for you. So you see that he already gets mass change. And okay, so he's not taking any chances. He's going straight for Dark Law, which is smart. I, I think that is smart because like why let your opponent top deck a sacrifice and then actually have plays when you can just say no <laughs> like you can just you can basically just banish their monster kill their field they have no field presence and then you know like they they have nothing on their extra deck they have no field presence and you're you're still five cards 
So it looks like he has the Monarch Stormforth. Good counter. Legit counter. He goes for Monolith. Not the greatest card in the world, but it's whatever. Now he sets one. Maybe a blind MST. Nope. Have no idea what the back row is. It's not a battle trap. Otherwise, he probably would have used it. Especially if your opponent summons Monolith. That's like the worst one to summon, too. Even when that dude dies, or when he gets tributed in, and have any good effects. He flips over Vanities. Come on, Doctor. You have to have something to play. You have to have some Spuller Trap Destruction, buddy. You have to assume that at some point, Cleaves are going to have... Um, yeah, at some point, you have to assume that, that Cleaves are going to hit the Floodgate cards. He doesn't. And that Monolith might actually ride him to victory. He activates Mash Charge to get Shadow Mist and Mash Change. At least he gets a turn, basically, to compose himself, even though he did give up 4,000 life points for nothing. He's going to set a couple of cards in case Crimson is dumb and turns off his vanities like an idiot, which I don't expect Crimson to do. I just, I wonder what this card is. It, it must be like an emergency card, some random bluff or something like that. Okay, so he does turn his vanities off. I guess he's just going for a game. You can't, um, what's it called? You can't, you can't special. Um, vanities is still in effect. Uh, it causes a chain. Oh, wait, no, no, my bad. I'm lunching. No, it doesn't because you don't have to. I'm thinking you have to tribute immediately. You don't. Yeah, you, you totally don't have to tribute. So it goes for Vanity's Fiend using Dark Law. He gets Bubble Man, but he summons Vanity's Fiend. Yeah, for some reason, I'm thinking like when you, um, when you, what's it called? When you play Monarch Stormforth, you get time to actually decide if you want to tribute later in that turn or whatever. So. Yeah, Doctor just didn't have any, I guess he just didn't have any cards that remove threats that were actually on field, you know. I mean, he had he had a, he had a good amount of cards. He just, you know, should have played, uh, should have had like a Phoenix Chain or a Mirror Force or any type of, um, like, Battle Traps. And he, he almost certainly would have won because Crimson opened horribly. That was one of the worst openings I've seen for a Klee player, but still was able to get out the victory.